Hi friends, I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome back to my studio. My recent video about 10 Christmas cards ideas was so well received. Thank you so much. So I decided to record a little bit more advanced tutorial where I combine previous elements and something new and create a nice Christmas picture, Christmas centerpiece or Christmas card and I hope you really like it. So let's start. It's very handy to have a draft of paper where you could check your mixes. For example, uh, for oranges I will use Pirol orange uh, and uh, Madder Brown. Let's start. So Pirol orange for, for oranges and I would like to group them in this area. So with the tip of the brush, just with the tip of the brush, I paint something round. I apply different pressure. No need it to be a perfect circle. With the second brush, I soften a little bit the edges within, within this circle, just because I like when it's uh, a little bit uneven a li and um, more, more interesting to my taste. I find a middle of, of the orange and I would like to divide my orange into small pieces about this. And then I want to emphasize a little bit and um, divide the inner part from, from the skin. And I use permanent yellow for some yellowish accents. I um, create now this um, citrus texture. Nothing complicated, you see, I um, create some brush strokes and I leave a lot of white space in between these brush strokes. Uh, sometimes it's um, nice to soften some areas about this. This is this one orange. Usually Christmas oranges, they're a little bit mm, uh, dried, this type of dried oranges. And that's why I add this brownish color, red brownish color. It's uh, it called permanent matter brown and it creates this burned idea around. In the same time, I'm thinking, I keep thinking about green, greenery, and I use purling green to paint some leaves. And I allow all my watercolors to be mixed how to paint leaves, by the way. <laughs> you put your brush on, on the tip, on the tip of the brush, then press, and then release the pressure. In principle, that's the leaf, but if you want to paint two half, two parts leaf, you go to the tip of your leaf, apply some pressure, and come back to the starting point. And that, <laughs> that's all the trick. You could add some um, darker shades while the paper is still wet for more contrast. Always nice to have uneven amount of leaves. So more pressure, less pressure. More pressure, less pressure. I like to keep this very contrast. Um, now let's um, paint another um, another um, fruit, another citrus. I would like to make it a little bit more yellowish. So I use a mix of permanent yellow with um, pure, uh, Pirol, not Aperol, just Pirol, but uh, it sounds already very festive. 
and I just soften everything. I bring my color, my watercolor from edges to the center and I do it with some chaotic moves to imitate these uneven skin of um, what we are painting of oranges of oranges uh, always nice to add more shades and um, contrast especially around around um, around the area to uh, add some volume also nice to divide um, leaves, greenery and fruits and I remind you that when you paint citruses try to move your brush um, in different directions and it's more like a tapping tapping moves that recreates this um, <laughs> this uh, texture this citrus texture Let's go back to painting, um, to painting another um, open part, another cut, slice, slice, sorry, sorry, I forgot the word, slice. And the more interesting we are making it, the better. So I, I use a bit of um, matte brown, very beautiful color. Uh, but if you do not have in your palette, you could try to mix burnt sienna and one of your reds, um, permanent red, for example, it will be, in principle, it will be the same. Just sometimes it's very handy to paint uh, from the ready, um, from ready already paints. So now I divide it. I wash my brush. I dry it a bit with a paper towel and I go and soften the edges inside, not outside, inside. And the more, you know, free your hand is, the more artistic and interesting it will be at the end. For the inside parts, I use permanent yellow and a bit of pyrrol. Pyrrol is very interesting color, it's a very very interesting color. When it is bold, it's clearly very orange, and once it's diluted, it turned into a beautiful pink. So I I really recommend it uh, to have it in your palette. It creates a lot of possibilities you for your paintings for example this is very very bold one and you see how brighten it up all our all our picture while this part is still wet i would like to add more green leaves uh, my idea is that this area is relatively dark so I will paint a diluted light green leaf here. I allow all my watercolors mix during the process. Mm, maybe one more leaf, just a part of the leaf. Sometimes you could add texture just with the tip of the brush with these free hand moves just like this and on this side I would like to emphasize the greenery and make more contrast so I take Berlin green in much more bold mix and what do I do I I find a, a white spot um, a lighter spot around here and uh, more pressure, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure. I create a leaf and another one to imitate the branch of um, orange branches. 
um, orange <clears throat> leaves are pretty simple, no need to invent anything. Just sometimes add more details into it. Now, what we could paint in our composition, of course, cinnamon sticks. For cinnamon sticks, I take my matter brown and I think What's important, not to paint cinnamon sticks like a fence, uh, very horizontal or very vertical. Um, add some, um, turn them in some degrees. How we paint them? Just paint a line and then with the tip of the brush make some, um, some dotted line, let's say, and take it's already quite nice, but if you wash your brush and uh, dry it a little bit and soften the edges here and there, that's going to be look like a cinnamon stick. And take a little bit more of bold color and very carefully paint the circle around. Just a small, no need to go into details, just a small circle, that's enough to show us that's the cinnamon stick. Let's paint one more, let's paint some intersection. Uh, cinnamon sticks, they have this um, dotted line texture, so that's why I'm trying to emulate this, and I do it just with painting lines and leave a uh, sum of white space in between and what's important small tiny little detail but it brings the idea that I paint with the tip of a brush I paint these round corners round um, areas inside the cinnamon stick of course, we will paint more. Right now, I would like to paint one here. And this cinnamon stick will be under these green leaves. Try to paint them in about of the same size. So they... Um, Look, uh, uh, they will look like they came from one set of cinnamon sticks. Mm, maybe one. Try to avoid cross this um, very geometrical crossing. Um, but for example, you could paint one next to another. Very close. And the more texture you add, I try to move my hand so you could see what I'm doing. And I painted these dotted lines. And then I change my brush and I take a bold, this, this same color in bold. And I very carefully paint these rolls on the top. And of course, I add some shades and contrast. And um, it's okay uh, to come back here once, uh, once it's dry, and add more texture and details. Let's paint the fifth one. Um, always nice when it's uneven amount, so it's not too symmetrical. And um, here comes our composition direction. So. Uh, you could see this move and if we add one more cinnamon stick I think around this also would be nice to avoid two parallel um, two parallel uh, lines but um, it's slightly uneven and that's that's good why to avoid parallel lines? The same why I uh, advise you not to paint it's too symmetrical uh, because then it makes our eye 
uh, travel across the picture and uh, it's more interesting. It's more interesting for a viewer when things are a little bit uneven, a little bit uncertain. Um, so your eye really travel on your picture and does not stick to something. Just small little tips. So that's um, our main heroes. Of course, would be nice to add some berries. Four berries I will take just with the red, with the red, and I might mix it with pyrrole to make, soften it, soften everything a little bit. I do not want our berries to be too red. I want the picture be rather consistent. How to paint berries? How to paint berries? Let's have a look. First, you take relatively bold mix on the tip of the brush paint a circle paint a circle and then you leave some white untouched area white untouched area because uh, berries they usually have very gla glance very uh, what's the word uh, this texture and um, it has a white spot of light on it. That's how we create this berries volume. We could emphasize the filling with a certain bold brush stroke around. Uh, but as we paint loose, what's important now to catch the floor and just paint one by another one and leave white spots. Do not forget to leave white, white spots. It's nice when you have some variety in the color. You could uh, mix bra uh, our brown color with a red and um, what we have a uh, pyrrole of course for some variety i will show you how it could look so i'm i take a bit of pyrrole to go into the berry and the berry looks a bit more pink and soft Although it's, you could uh, uh, see that it's still from the same, from the same idea, from the same branch, let's say. Always, it doesn't matter how you paint inside. In principle, it's important to leave this small, tiny, white spot. Right now, I would like, I would like to paint few branches. And for branches, for painting branches, I load the thinner brush the brown color with meadow brown, <coughs> meadow brown and big one with uh, perline green. Um, when I paint my branches, I think, uh, I still think about this um, kind of composition and I just paint, first I paint the branch itself. And with the tip of the brush, just with the tip of the brush, I paint these green needles. I go from, from the middle of the branch outside. No need, of course, to paint each and every needle. The more mm, uh, white space you have, the more airy will be your picture. What will be nice? to combine dark spots with light spots. And for this purpose, we have in our palette more bold mixed and more diluted mixture. So you could paint a few um, needles in bold color and then go to uh, the part with diluted colors and 
add some strokes with diluted colors. Don't overthink this. This should be quite, quite simple. Let's paint another one. Meadow brown. Let's see. I think this would be nice. This direction would be nice, for example. I like to um, drag out this brown color for, from the brush while it is still wet. Uh, that brings nice mm, mix in our painting. And of course, I combine it with darker green color. Um, let's paint more. This um, corner is, is a bit empty. I'm thinking to add one of oranges here, but for now, I what I would like to do is to paint green, lovely um, branch. And do not afraid to overlap, to go over your previous pictures. It all creates volume and more um, makes your painting more intricate. It's a nice exercise for painting even strokes and fine strokes. Try to paint um, more overlapping within um, these green needles and, oh, and more contrast, as I said. That's a little bit too bold, so I need to dilute the color a bit to make it um, softer, because for needles we do not need this structure. And let's paint something different right now. I think we practice really nicely with painting needles. I think Anis, 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 how you, how people pronounce it. Um, these stars would be really, really nice. And I paint them with um, um, Pirol, just with the tip of the brush. It's small, um, I paint in some small loops and I add darker brown into the middle and let watercolor just flow. Let's, I will show you it again. I take very diluted um, Pirol, Pirol, I paint some loops It's very diluted and then I you could use the second brush for the same one I take the darker color and drop the darker color in the middle and everything is flies basically by itself I think it would be nice to paint the third one I will take permanent yellow and No, it would not be consistent, so <laughs> I changed my mind. I would like to paint it just in the same way with Pirol first and then with Meadow Brown. Um, let's paint one more branch in here. I think you practiced a lot during painting this picture. Again, I'm dragging out. This was not really nice, but yeah. You could move and you could turn your paper to make it more handy. No need to stress out about some maybe bolder needles. That's not the end of the world. At the end, it will be a lovely Christmas picture. 
I think few berries are great in this corner and I want them to be really really pop popping up. So I use relatively bold mix and um, same principle some bubbles but with white spot in it. And I would like to combine them with something different for example with pyrrole and it all mixes it all um, flow one into each other uh, one into another and that creates really 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 fun first of all it's a big fun to paint when you have some some uncertainty and second it's uh, quite artistic what we get at the end Um, try uh, to think how you could feel in all your picture. For example, would be nice to add right now some branches, some extra branches. I will take Berlin Green in very, very bold mix because it's the darkest color of what we have. And I create few random branches. I paint with the tip of the brush and I paint small little berries when um, oops, berries are so small not necessary to paint these white spots. You could just and you could um, it's more like filler for our winter bouquet that's this is this is it for example and this creates a nice contrast to everything what we've created so far and um that called fillers because obviously it fill in some white areas very simple just with the tip of the brush we we actually we are coming uh, to the end of our painting and now it's uh, pretty pretty relaxing you see how we apply different contrast we have big areas of oranges we have small tiny little dotted areas with these branches And it all creates very nice, very playful composition. Try not to overthink it. It should be all bring to an idea that um, we add contrast, we add some variety into our, into our painting. For example, he, here is, uh, I will show you how to um, fix this also that could happen that's not the end of the world when when you um, painted something or moved with your hand usually it's not the end of the world i think the easiest solution here will be to just to paint some berries on the top so i wash my brush i take something bold and i over it I paint some berries, few berries, not forgetting about this white spot. I want some, some nice idea about it. And you see how um, we transformed our mis mishap <laughs> uh, into a nice beautiful arrangement so that's i would like you to 
always remember that most of um, mistakes, errors with watercolor could be fix, fixed and sometimes it even brings more value to your painting. Mm, let's have a look. Few more berries for balancing the picture. Try to avoid being too symmetrical. For example, two berries are combined together. One is a bit um, aside, a bit separate. Let's paint um, a few leaves, but in slightly different style. I take my diluted mix of pearling green and I paint just outlines. I paint just outlines and that creates some, some air and some special touch to your painting. And that's very easy. You, with the tip of the brush, you paint some outlines and the middle line of the, of the leaf. Um, you just look at your picture. Remember that our composition goes in this direction, so better to follow with um, your ideas in this direction and create some outline. That's not our focal point, so again, not overthink it. And why not to paint some brown leaves in the same style. Um, I think at this point you probably have something slightly different from mine that usually happens because you're painting in your own flow, in, with your, within your own vi vision, so it could be very likely that your extra details, your fillers should be in different places. Just try to Find nice, empty, white, untouched spots. And this is basically it. Another very important um, ability for watercolor painting, from I guess for every painting, is to stop at the right moment. And what I'm doing right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed the process. If you would like to extend your Christmas design a little bit more, go back to the video about 10 Christmas card ideas. Subscribe my channel, leave some feedback and see you next time. Bye bye.